The principal way in which silicoclastic sediment reaches the deep oceans is through turbidity currents. And these are very commonly rooted along channels. And these can make some pretty spectacular depositional architectures that have been imaged on seismic profiles. So in this short presentation, we'll be looking at examples of aggradational channels, ones that have been built up through the accumulation of sediment left behind by the turbidity currents. All the examples we'll see come from the Virtual Seismic Atlas. So let's start off on the northern margin of South America. And we're going to look at examples from the Magdalena Fan, where the Magdalena River flows out and deposits sediments on the southern flank of the Caribbean. Here we go. So this is a bathymetric map of the seabed. Let's zoom in a bit closer to here. Now the colours we're looking at in here, the red colours are shallow water, the darker blue colours are deeper water, so there's a general increase of bathymetry from right to left. And you'll see running within this are some spectacular sinuous forms. In order to see these more clearly, what we can do is take away the bathymetry and just look at the gradients on the seabed. So the darker colours on here show steeper gradients and the lighter colours very shallow gradient. And we can see these sinuous channel forms meandering their way across the seabed. As we'll see in a second, these also exist in the subsurface. So let's look at a profile that is oriented north-south here. And we can see the seabed is really rough, although bear in mind there's significant vertical exaggeration in here. We're quite a long way down below sea level, so we don't have to worry about seismic artefacts like multiples. Well, let's just look at a small part of this profile in here. And let's just consider the modern seabed, and you can see those sort of two horn-like features poking up that define the margins of a submarine channel. Well, these are levees. Let me just look at this shallow part in here. These levees bound a channel form in the middle in here. Notice how the seismic amplitude changes as we move from levees to the middle of the channel. And these differences in seismic fasces pick out what are generally thought to be sedimentary fasces. In other words, different grain sizes effectively within the sediments. So the high amplitude signals we're looking at in here are generally thought to represent a sandy channel fill. In, in contrast, the levees have finer grain sediments within them. So in other words, the turbidity current leaves behind sedimentary grains, leaves deposits, turbidites, and the grain size in these turbidites are fractionated between the channel fill and the levee. And this is represented by the different amplitudes in the seismic signal. OK, so let's look deeper in the section. And we can see the same sorts of features in the subsurface, representing the trace of former channel systems. We can see this feature down in here, again with the sandy channel fill and the finer grain levees on the side. And we can trace this back up to the surface to the modern day. So in other words, we can see how this channel has developed through time. If you look elsewhere in the profile, we can see other channel forms, such as over here. And it looks like the bottom of this channel was slightly incisional. Here's another profile through the Magdalena channel systems. And if we look closely within the levees, you can pick out fault structures, which represent collapse features just within the internal levees as they collapse down into the channel. Not surprisingly, as that's the steepest slope. Notice the fault does not continue deeper into the subsurface. It's a surface expression of gravitational collapse and sediments falling back into the channel. Again, really common features within levee systems. So we zoom back out to the bathymetric map, showing the shaded relief. You can see the main channels coming through, but you can also see these ghostly outlines of former channels lying south of the main channel in here. I'm presuming these are gradually filling up by mud and finer grained sediments, giving them a less pronounced expression. We'll come back to these sorts of features shortly. Let's go to another example on the other side of the Caribbean, on the northern Gulf of Mexico. 
And this is a map created from a 3D seismic volume showing a particular stratigraphic level in the subsurface. So it's an ancient seabed map. Let's zoom in. And here's part of this feature and it shows this seabed across which some channel forms have flowed, leaving their deposits. You can see that the channel system on the left running across from top to bottom is slightly incisional, so it's cut a groove, if you like, into that seabed. The right-hand side has more complicated erosional features. But it's not really the erosional features we're interested in here. Look at the aggradational packages. So what we can do now is put part of the seismic back on top of this mapped surface to show the form of the levees. So a set of serial sections put back, showing the seismic expression in cross sections, laid back across this former seabed. And again, you can see the characteristic form of the levees, sediment mounds adjacent to the channel, and the levees decay away, creating these sort of moustache-type shapes. Again, if you look carefully, you can see that the edges of many of these levee profiles show little faults as the internal margins of the levees collapse back into the channels. So some pretty spectacular architectures developed by turbidity currents as they leave their sediment in submarine channels. Finally, let's move across the Atlantic to the margins of Africa. And this is offshore Equatorial Guinea. And it shows the seabed. Again, the red colours represent the shallow water. The Darker blue colours represent deeper water, and you can see a series of channel structures that come down the slope from the shallow to the deep. Now, most of the main active channel systems rely on the right-hand side of this profile. We're interested, though, in the left-hand side, where you've got those slightly smoother channel forms. These locations are not receiving main turbidity currents at the moment. Rather, they've been abandoned, but it doesn't mean there's not deposition happening there. So let's look at a profile through here. And you can see on the seabed, the channel forms, those gullies and ravines. But notice that the seismic reflectors beneath the surface largely mimic the form of the seabed. But let's just pick a horizon through here in yellow, coming through. You see that above this, to the seabed, we've got largely aggradational forms. And these sediments are believed to be mud that is simply rained down and is gradually healing the channel forms that lie at depth. Rather like snow blanketing a landscape. You can still see aspects of that landscape beneath, but if that was to continue, eventually the mud would just seal everything. Let's look a bit deeper and you can see rather more complicated forms. With these fault systems again, collapsing into channel structures. So early formed channel structures in the deeper subsurface, normal faults collapsing into the channel axes, overlain by muddy strata that are simply aggraded over these early channels gradually healing the seabed, but still reflecting part of that deeper morphology. If we step back, we can perhaps appreciate that process in three dimensions, looking onto the seabed in the colour and the vertical profile at the bottom, showing the aggradational muds below. So mud washed off the shallow water onto this submarine slope. So that's a very quick look at the seismic expression of some submarine channels. Seismic data like this has really informed the ways in which we can understand turbidity currents and their deposits, the turbidites themselves. These seismic images have been produced by companies in the search for hydrocarbons. The sandy channel axes are important hydrocarbon reservoirs in the deep water. But these make some pretty spectacular depositional architectures in their own right.